let's see another topic which is about the rrna and ribosomes rrna is nothing but ribosomal rna ribosomal rna is integral part of the ribosomes and majority of them that means 80% around 80% of rna in the cell is nothing but rrna only and this rrna it is the part of the ribosomes along with ribonucleoproteins are present okay they are nucleoproteinaceous particle nucleo means nucleic acid is present which nucleic acid is present ribosomal rna is present and they are proteinaceous which proteins are present ribosomal proteins are present and these ribosomes they are there are two types of ribosomes one are they are freely present in the cytoplasm for example if this is the nucleus the ribosomes are present freely which are called as free ribosomes or they may be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum suppose if this is the endoplasmic reticulum the ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum this is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum because the ribosomes are studied on this one okay the ribosomes are present either freely or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum and there are two types of ribosomes they are prokaryotic ribosome and eukaryotic ribosomes prokaryotic ribosomes are called as 70s type of ribosomes eukaryotic ribosomes are called as 80s type of ribosomes s is nothing but the swedberg units which tells us how fast the organelle or the particle gets sedimented in an ultra centrifuge okay the prokaryotic ribosomes are 70s and eukaryotic ribosomes are 80s each ribosome whatever it may be either prokaryotic or eukaryotic they contain two subunits one is the smaller subunit another one is larger subunit larger subunit and smaller subunit both are united to form the ribosomes let's see first the prokaryotic ribosomes which are 70s type of ribosomes so the 70s type of ribosomes i told you they are divided into smaller subunit as well as larger subunit the smaller subunit is called as 30s type of ribosome 30s smaller subunit is present and the larger is 50s larger subunit is present this is 50s each of them is again made of what ribosomal rna plus ribosomal proteins each subunit likewise here also so ribosomal rna plus ribosomal proteins are there in the smaller subunit only one ribosomal rna is present which is 16s rrna and there are about 21 different ribosomal proteins which are designated as s1 s2 s3 s4 up to s21 because it is the smaller subunit that was that is why it is indicated yes and the larger subunit is of 50s type of larger subunit which contains ribosomal rna plus ribosomal proteins the rrna which is present in the larger subunit are 5s rrna as well as 23s rrna are present and there are about 20 31 different types of ribosomal proteins are present okay which are designated as l1 l2 l3 up to l31 l represents the larger subunit okay this is again the 70s ribosomal uh, ribosomes which contains total proteins of 54 we have seen in our previous case that there are 21 proteins in the smaller subunit and 31 proteins in the larger subunit together it has to come to 52 but there are 54 proteins are present why means duplicate number of l5 and l12 proteins 
they are present in two copies that is why 54 ribosomal proteins are present in the prokaryotic ribosomes and the ratio between the ribosomal rna and ribosomal proteins is two thirds of ribosomal rna is present only one third of ribosomal proteins are present in case of prokaryotic ribosomes and any ribosome whatever it may be either prokaryotic or eukaryotic they are rich in basic amino acids like lysine and arginine that is why these ribosomes they are positively charged these ribosomal proteins are positively charged that is why they could able to bind to the negatively charged rrna molecules as well as mrna and trna molecules because of the positive charge which is present on the ribosomal proteins and magnesium ion bivalent metal ions like magnesium is required for the binding of the two subunits in order to bind these two subunits what is required magnesium ion concentration is also very crucial ats ribosomes are present in the eukaryotes and these ats ribosomes they are again divided into large smaller subunit and larger subunit the smaller subunit is 40s type of smaller subunit larger subunit is 60s type each is again made of ribosomal rna and ribosomal proteins whatever it may be either smaller subunit or larger subunit both are made of ribosomal rna and ribosomal proteins the smaller subunit contains 18s rrna and 30 different proteins are present in the smaller subunit coming to the larger subunit larger subunit is 60s type which contains three rrnas what are they 5s rrna 5.8s rrna and 28s rrna are present which also contains around 50 proteins so together in case of the ats type how many proteins are present together around 80 proteins are present total number of proteins present are 80 different proteins are present and the ratio between rrna and proteins is one is to one and as you know they are rich in basic amino acids like lysine and arginine and magnesium ion is required for the binding of the two subunits whatever the case of ribosome the ribosome contains two hypothetical sites one is a site another one another site is the p site a site is called amino acyl site and p site is called peptidyl site peptidyl site and amino acyl site are present why they are form why they are called as amino acyl site means the trna on which the amino acids are linked is known as peptidyl trna okay if, imagine if this is the trna where the amino acids this is one amino acid and this is second amino acid there is the peptide bond this trna is called as peptidyl trna the peptidyl trna enters into p site the first amino acid along with trna first enters into the p site this is the exception case the first amino acid always enters into the p site and all the other amino acylated trnas enters into the a site okay all the amino acylated trnas for example if this is the uh, trna which is carrying only one amino acid it first enters into the a site then only it is transferred into the p site okay stay on this slide for a moment all the points we covered already just go through the points one after another this is comparative uh, study between the 70s and 80s type of ribosomes and let's see the ribosomal rna interactions which is very important for the process of translation 
This ribosomal RNA helps in bringing the mRNA and tRNA together. Why it is uh, bringing together means because of the positively charged proteins. I told you that ribosomal proteins are rich in lysine and arginine which are positively charged. This positive charge attracts easily the uh, rRNA, mRNA as well as tRNA. And the 5' prime end of the mRNA contains a seven nucleotide sequence called AGG, AGG U, which is called as Shine Dalgarno sequence. Here, this is mRNA, which contains the Shine Dalgarno sequence, AGG, AGG U. For example, if the, this is imagined, this is called as Shine Dalgarno sequence. Why it is important means it helps in the binding of the 16s rRNA that means to the 30s subunit the mRNA can easily bind this is imagine 16s rRNA and the above is Shane Dalgarno sequence Shane Dalgarno sequence is complementary to the 16s rRNA thereby enables binding of mRNA to the 30s subunit the same is mentioned here 16 s rRNA contains a complementary sequence that is why it binds to the smaller subunit. Likewise 16 s rRNA and 23 s rRNA also contain some complementary sequences forming 16 s 23 s hybrid which helps in bringing the smaller and larger subunits together. Suppose imagine if this is the 16 s 16S rRNA which helped in the binding of the mRNA. The same 16S rRNA also helps the binding of larger subunit because 16S rRNA is complementary. Some of the sequences are complementary to the 23S rRNA. Thereby helps in the binding of both the smaller and larger subunit. Okay, 16 years rRNA also provides binding site for the tRNA also. It helps in the binding of the tRNA here. Okay, so the 16 years rRNA does three functions. It binds to the Shane Delgarno sequence to which is present on the mRNA. It also has some complementary sequences to the 23 23 rRNA and it also has a binding site for the uh, tRNA also. All these functions, these are the interactions of rRNA with different types of subunits as well as mRNA and tRNA. How the rRNA is interacting with mRNA and tRNA. Likewise, initiation factor which is required in the process of translation, it has, it is a protein factor. It has some affinity with the 16S rRNA which helps in the initiation of the translation. Another important point is GTCIC. Where it is present? It is present on the tRNA. And for this sequence, for this GTCIC, a complementary sequence called CAAG is present. Where it is present? It is present on the 5S rRNA. 5S rRNA, where it is present? It is present in the larger subunit. Imagine, uh, listen, in the larger subunit, two are present. 5S rRNA is present and 23S rRNA is present. In the smaller subunit, 16S rRNA is present. Okay. Okay. So, here the 5S rRNA is important for the binding of the charged tRNA to the ribosome. Okay. Okay. These are the ribosomal RNA interactions with different molecules. Like it interacts with the proteins. It interacts with the uh, smaller subunit, it in interacts with the mRNA as well as tRNA, thereby bringing all of them, that means ribosomes provide a platform uh, here, to, to in order to provide the platform, it has, it has some different binding sites. Okay, all different complementary sequences like uh, CAAG sequence is present on the 5S rRNA, Shane Delgarno sequence is present on the mRNA, for which complementary sequence is present on the 16S rRNA. Likewise, 
it 16 years rRNA interacts with the 23 years rRNA thereby binding of the smaller and larger subunit are facilitated so all these interactions they facilitate for proper functioning or proper synthesis of the proteins till now we have seen the ribosomal RNA and ribosomes together both we have seen both the prokaryotic ribosomes as well as eukaryotic ribosomes hope you understood very well thanks for watching till the end and you continue to watch other videos on this topic and explore dorka berry tutorials for more videos thank you